Last week, I shared some common money habits that keep people poor, and today, I'm sharing the rest of that list. Blaming other people. This is one of the most common excuses that people have that hold them back in their life, not only in their finances, but a lot of different areas. Maybe you blame your parents, your kids, your husband, your wife, your circumstances, your city, your job, the economy. People blame other people for pretty much everything that happens in their lives. But especially when it comes to finances, just because you were never taught finances growing up doesn't mean that you can't change that within a year and become relatively an expert on knowing the things that you need to know that will actually make an impact in your life. Just because your family is not on board, just because you live in a certain neighborhood, doesn't mean you have to stay there forever, doesn't mean you have to be what everybody around you is. This is where we really need to take extreme ownership of our lives and realize that we have a lot more control over our lives than we think. We can choose how to spend every day. We can choose to learn something. We can choose to watch TV. We can choose to work harder. We can choose to relax. We can go to the gym. We can stay home. We can eat healthy. We can eat junk food. It is all our choice. And the one thing we need to realize is that we are in control and that discipline brings freedom. Getting a second job to pay for something bad. In the last video, I talked about the importance of not just having one stream of income and that the average millionaire has seven streams, but also something that is very common is for people to go out and get a second job to pay for a bad habit. They'll have a shopping addiction and their part-time job pays for that shopping addiction. They'll have something negative that they need to pay for, and instead of cutting that out and dealing with the problem, they'll take time out of their lives and start working a second job. I've seen a bunch of people do this and it is just really a, a waste of life. It's, it's great to have a second job to save up money and start investing and actually change your life for the better and buy more freedom and make progress. But if you're taking all that time and energy and money just so you can supplement your shoe addiction or your new car or whatever it is, that's just a waste of life. Not really thinking about wants versus needs. Most people really never think about the difference between wants and needs. But this is where personally I've found a lot of happiness and a lot of freedom. Most people, if they want something, they just take a few clicks and it shows up at their house the next day. And they go outside and they pick up the box and they forgot what they even ordered and it makes no difference in their lives. As an extremely frugal person, I've seen how much freedom you can have by having very low expenses because then you don't need to work as much, you don't need to earn as much, you can have a lot more freedom just by really focusing on what do I actually need in order to survive, not like what do I want right now and I'm just gonna get that, which is just a very common thing for people to do. If you wanna know if something is a want or a need, simply ask the question, what would happen if I don't buy this thing? I would say like 94% of the time, the answer is gonna be nothing. Like maybe you won't have that thing, that's something, but will you be less happy? Will your life be harder? Will anybody die? Probably not. So just don't get it. Having the wrong friend group. This is a tricky one because you don't want to just be friends with people for financial reasons. However, there are people who will never get out of where they are because of their friend group. Maybe your friends have no interest in money. Maybe your friends make a lot of money and therefore they spend a lot of money and you just need to keep up with them when you're with them. They have really nice houses and cars so you feel like this urge to kind of uh, have nice stuff as well. Maybe they invite you out for drinks all the time and you feel compelled to go. Maybe they don't care about work or bettering themselves or keeping their house clean. Who you are around and you spend your time with will drastically change your mindset. It'll change how healthy you are. It'll change how wealthy you are. And I have seen this in my own life where, where if I hang around people who are fit, I'll start going to the gym. Or if I hang around people who are business owners, I'll start treating YouTube like a business and actually ask people to subscribe and hit the little bell thing because if they don't, they could never see a video of mine again. Being okay with debt. It's become sadly normal to have debt, whether that's for your house, for your car, just credit card debt. And I personally believe that people are far too comfortable with having a, a lot of debt and they'll just accumulate more and more and more as long as they can make those monthly payments. I think it's really important to never have consumer debt if at all possible, especially for things that are not 100% necessities to survive. And if at all possible, avoiding getting a car loan or a bigger mortgage than you have to because you have to realize that each time you have more and more debt, bigger and bigger monthly payments, you're gonna have to earn a lot more, which takes a lot more time. So the more debt you have, the less freedom and the less life that you have. Never going from saving to investing. A lot of people will never make that shift into actually investing because of fear. 
For most people, the fear of losing money is greater than the reward of building wealth. I remember the first time I took my entire life savings and I bought my first multifamily when I was like 22. It was nerve wracking. I was literally putting everything I had on the line, but because I had done the math, it eliminated a lot of fear for me. I knew that this was going to work out. Even if things went bad, it was still gonna work out. And that first investment, that first time going from saving to investing and overcoming this fear of putting everything that I had worked for my entire life on the line, even though my entire life I was only 22. I'd been working since I was 11, so it, it was everything I had. And because of that, I was able to get two more properties. I was able to leave my job. My wife was able to leave her job. I was able to really start focusing on things I enjoyed like YouTube, all because of getting over that fear of investing and actually taking a risk where yes, it could go to zero, but it could also drastically change my life. And most people are unwilling to take that risk not understanding risk. Most people see investing as risky like I just talked about, but something that most people don't see is the risk of not investing. There is a real risk that happens to 90 something percent of people that you will go to work every day for the best years of your life at a job you don't really like that much to make somebody else wealthy, miss your kids' soccer games, be stressed your entire life, not really have the freedom to do things you wanna do to help people, to travel, to start a business, that, is a drastic risk, but most people think it's risky to invest $10,000 into the stock market. Well, that can be risky if you're just randomly betting on companies that you have no idea about. It doesn't have to be as risky. Obviously, there's some risk with any form of investing. Otherwise, why would you make money? But if you invest in something like VTI or the S&P 500 that's gained 10% over the last 100 years, there's a lot less risk to that than guaranteeing that you're gonna spend all that amount of life until you're 65 doing stuff you don't like. Like that's, that's a real risk. That's gonna happen unless you take a different risk and make something else happen. If you guys do wanna start investing, I use uh, Webull, not a sponsor, but there is a link down in the description. You can get two to five stocks uh, for free. So it's free money. I just invest in nothing but index funds. Very simple to do, just buy and hold for the long term. Focus on the wrong stuff. They'll never invest in a book. They'll never invest in a course. They won't invest the time or money. They won't invest the time into listening to a podcast or watching a YouTube video. They'd just rather be entertained instead. Well, that's fine and it's good to be entertained and relax a little bit. Also realize that every time you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else and those yeses will drastically change your life. Having long-term expensive habits. Honestly, this can be anything, but if you look at something like smoking or drinking, these are long-term habits that you do every day that will have a drastic impact on your finances. Well, I'm gonna use smoking as an example real quick. This is the cost of smoking over a lifetime. The out-of-pocket cost, 88,000. That's a lot, but not crazy. The financial opportunity cost, 773,000. That's life-changing money. That's if you took that money, and instead of buying cigarettes, you invested it, you would have $773,000. That's just crazy. Then there's the self-care costs of 135,000 over your life. Then there's the income loss. Honestly, I have no idea how they came up with these numbers, but I'm guessing they're accurate. 219,000. Then other costs. So over your lifetime, that could be over a million dollars in actual costs and opportunity costs that that one habit cost you. If you have two people and one of them invests $5 a day and one of them smokes $5 a day, at the end of their life, their lives are gonna look drastically different. And we have to look at all of our habits that way. Is this habit costing me time, money, energy, or opportunity costs? And calculate that over 10, 20, 30, 50 years and realize that these negative things that we're doing over the long term have far more costs than we see. All right, we're gonna end with a couple of rapid fire. Not tracking your expenses, knowing how much you spent last month, last week, or last year. Just generally hiding from your finances, which is what most people do. Not caring about or having an emergency fund. Having an emergency fund is insanely important when you have emergencies. Things happen, life happens, happens to everybody, eventually it's gonna come. It can either ruin your life and take months to get out of, or you can just prepare for it. This one's probably gonna be a little bit controversial, but having pets, and always having pets, and having too many pets. I see a lot of people who can barely afford to feed their kids and pay their bills who have multiple pets that can cost thousands of dollars a year. Well, animals do provide certain emotional things. If you can't afford to take care of a pet correctly and take care of your family correctly, I, I don't think that is a good thing that you should be having. You should wait until you are financially secure enough to do that, to have that as a reward, as a bonus. 
I don't know, I've seen it a few times and it's a little messed up. The last thing that almost everybody on the planet does is this habit of not being subscribed to my channel. So if you don't wanna be like everybody else, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week.